Douglas Ross, first of all, give me a reaction to the latest lockdown measures in Aberdeen. Yeah, I mean, it's very concerning the increase in number of cases now up to 54. It's uh, a clear message that this virus has not left Scotland or the UK. It's still very much present here. The restrictions that have been reintroduced and will be reviewed again in seven days shows how important it is that we continue to work as communities and individuals to stop the spread of this virus. And I think it's also important that the UK and Scottish governments continue to work together to fight the virus to save lives and livelihoods. For a Scottish Conservative leader, you'll be at Westminster, you won't be able to, even able to hold the Scottish Government to account over this. You're going to be largely irrelevant on the biggest issue, aren't you? Well, as you know, Colin, uh, Ruth Davidson has agreed to come back in and field First Minister's questions, but you know, I'm from Scotland, we're here in Murray today, I'll be very present for the next nine months ahead of the general election campaign for the Scottish Parliament and you'll be hearing a lot from me on important matters such as the increase in restrictions in Aberdeen, but other policies going forward as well. But it'll be like you're shouting from the sidelines, won't it? Uh, Colin, you'll know uh, very well that this is a tried and tested method. Obviously, Alex Salmond was an MSP, an MP, uh, uh, leader of the SNP and you know First Alex Minister. Salmond. Well, no, uh, there are differences between me and Alex Salmond, and I think that's positive, but there is a precedent there that people could do that and have done that in the past. Also, Nicola Sturgeon, when that was the case, was deputy leader of the SNP. Ruth Davidson's not going to be your deputy leader, is she? You've got two deputy leaders in Holyrood, you're completely ignoring them? Uh, no, I'm not, and it was up to anyone in the Scottish Conservatives if they wished to put themselves forward. Obviously, earlier on today, it was uh, announced that I was the only candidate with the required nominations to stand for leader of the Scottish Conservatives, and over the next few days, after a discussion I've had with the MSP group earlier on today, I'll be reviewing the positions within the Shadow Cabinet and throughout the party, uh, and looking to get the best team on the pitch ahead of the elections next May. You left Holyrood for the Commons. Ruth Davidson's about to leave the Scottish Parliament for the, the Lords. Is the Scottish Parliament second best for the Conservatives? Absolutely not. And what the Scottish Parliament should be about is about the debate and the aspiration for the future of Scotland. And what we've seen over the last six years since the independence referendum is division and discord across Scotland. I want to get away from that and have a positive message on the economy, on the health service, on education. That's what we should be focusing on and we'll be doing that in the Scottish Parliament. Which suggests you've had a negative message thus far and it hasn't worked for you. Are you a change of leader for the next election or is this for another independence referendum? No, this is absolutely, we shouldn't be looking at the division of the past. We settled that once in a generation argument just six years ago and what we shouldn't keep doing is going back to that constitutional argument because that suits the SNP, that suits the Scottish Government because it doesn't then shine a light on their domestic record which when you look at education, the NHS, the economy, there are major issues on those domestic policies that we should be challenging the SNP on to lift the debate to the challenges that this country faces. We'll come back to all these issues over the next few months. Douglas Ross, thanks for joining us in STV News.